In today's session for medicine, we are going to look at uh, a question for hepatic coma. So we'll go straight to read through the question. So the question says, uh, Mr. Chimbwali, a 56-year-old man from township, is admitted in Mayo Medical Ward with a diagnosis of hepatic coma. Question A is saying define uh, hepatic coma. Question A, to draw a well-labeled diagram of the liver. Question B, outline two signs and symptoms that Mr. Chimbwadi may present with in each of the following stage, prodromal stage and the comatose stage. Question C, describe the management of Mr. Chimbwadi from the time of admission uh, until discharge under the following headings. Uh, C1, medical management, C2, nursing care. Then, of course, question uh, D is saying state five points that you would include in the information, education, and communication to Mr. Chimbwadi on discharge. So we go straight and talk about question A. So in terms of defining a hepatic coma, we can define it as in, this is a serious complication of liver disease in which there is inability of the liver to detoxify harmful substances in the blood, leading to accumulation of ammonia in the blood, characterized by sudden loss of consciousness uh, and jaundice. So when we talk about hepatic coma, Normally, this one arises from uh, uh, other liver diseases as a complication. For example, the patient may be having maybe uh, hepatitis or liver cirrhosis uh, or any other liver problem. And then because the liver is damaged from that uh, any of those particular conditions, the blood ends up having a lot of ammonia. Normally, ammonia is toxic to the body and if it accumulates in excess levels or amounts in the brain, this is what now causes uh, irritation to the brain tissue, causing the patient to suddenly collapse to go into an unconscious state. So when that happens, now this patient is referred to have gone into what is known as hepatic coma. Then when we talk about the drawing of the liver, so basically, we can draw something that looks like this as the diagram of the liver. At least you need to show where uh, this is the right triangular ligament. We have the bare area, of course, the left triangular ligament. This is the left lobe, uh, false form ligament. We have the gallbladder there, which is just uh, you know, the, the, the what, an appendage of the liver. We have the right lobe. And of course, we also need to show where the hepatic ducts uh, are as well. But of course, this is how we can draw the diagram of the liver. Then apart from that, of course, question A is saying outline two signs and symptoms that Mr. Chimbwali may present with or uh, of each of the following stages. So during the prodromal stage or the early stage before the patient even just uh, collapses to go into unconscious state, some of the symptoms that the patient may present with is fatigue. Now, fatigue occurs as a result of the, uh, of the inability of the liver to metabolize nutrients and produce energy. So the liver is unable to break down nutrients so that at the end of the day we have energy. As a result, in the early phases, before the patient even goes into a hepatic coma, the patient will be complaining of fatigue. Apart from that, the other symptom is of course nausea, which is followed by vomiting. And nausea followed by vomiting is due to buildup of toxins in the blood which affects circulation to the digestive system. So because of buildup of toxins, you find that circulation is affected uh, to the GIT. And then in the GIT, instead of having continuous per peristaltic um, movements, 
the, there is more, almost a reverse peristalsis and this causes the patient to have frequent nausea and also um, experience the actual vomiting. Then of course on the comatose stage, the symptoms that we may see is of course altered level of consciousness. So with altered level of consciousness, this is due to accumulation of toxins like pneumonia in the brain. And this results in irritation of the brain tissue. So when ammonia, which is mainly supposed to be excreted through the liver, accumulates in excess amounts in the liver, this causes irritation to the liver itself, causing the patient to go into an uh, unconscious state. Apart from that, in the comatose stage, the patient may experience jaundice. So you find that uh, when the patient collapses, they may not have had uh, enough uh, or a lot of jaundice or maybe just signs of them. But afterwards, you find that the jaundice keeps on worsening and worsening in the unconscious state. That's when you notice that the problem is with the liver. And jaundice uh, occurs because of the inability of the liver to conjugate bilirubin because the liver is damaged it's unable to conjugate this bilirubin hence it continues over accumulating in the blood hence we see it as um, one of the symptoms of comatose stage then when we go to question uh, uh, c question c is saying describe the management of mr chimbuali from the time of admission until discharge under the following headings. And we start with medical management. So with medical management, of course, the first one we can say to restore normal liver function, to relieve symptoms of hepatic coma. Uh, you can talk about uh, to, promote, uh, 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 to promote a quick re recovery. And apart from that, you can say also to promote drug adherence. So from there, of course, the bigger heading is medical management. Under medical management, you can you need to start with investigations. So some of the investigations that we can do, of course, in terms of history taking, the patient will present with history of liver disease, such as liver cirrhosis. Then for physical examination, you can say during physical examination, the patient will present in unconscious state and also with the jaundice then other investigations that we can do of course uh, we can do a hepatic scan so a hepatic scan will show liver damage apart from that we can do a liver function test which will show uh, abnormalities in the liver we can do an ultrasound scan uh, which will show uh, damage to the liver itself we can do also magnetic resonance imaging, which can show inflamed, um, uh, inflamed brain meninges. So at least five investigations under medical management. Then after investigations, the next heading is, of course, the treatment. So in terms of treatment, we can give drugs such as... So we can give drugs, of course... Um, we can give drugs such as uh, vitamin A. So vitamin A, 100,000 to 200,000 international units. This one is given normally to replace epithelia and restore the normal structure of the liver. Then uh, apart from that, we can give, uh, a frost, uh, we can give of course, um, prednisolone. And prednisolone, we can give 25 milligrams. Uh, once per day orally for at least uh, 5 to 10 days. So prednisolone is given as an anti-inflammatory or corticosteroid in short. This one will help reduce the inflammation because normally hepatic coma comes as a complication from other liver diseases like hepatitis or liver cirrhosis. So this will help reduce that inflammation and restore normal functioning of the liver. We can also give hydrocortisone 100 milligrams IM. Uh, also, it's a corticosteroid given to restore a normal liver function. Apart from that, uh, edema normally is seen as well in hepatic coma. Hence, spironolactone 25 milligrams uh, is given uh, 
uh, as um, a diuretic to remove the excess levels of um, uh, of fluids accumulation in the body. So normally these are the drugs that can be given. Amongst them, even dexamethasone is given uh, just to reduce uh, a, a swelling of the brain tissue during the unconscious state of this particular patient. So these are some of the drugs that can be given uh, in a patient who has a hepatic coma. When we talk about the nursing care, in terms of the nursing care, this is an emergence when the patient has hepatic coma. Hence, of course, the headings you are going to say patient resuscitation, under patient resuscitation, talk about the airway, in terms of the airway, you can talk about points such as suctioning to ensure that the airway is patent, loosening tight clothing like neckties, necklaces to promote air circulation, uh, positioning the patient in lateral position for free flow of secretions, and any other point that can come on air. In terms of breathing, you can check the saturation levels. If below 90%, oxygen supplements can be administered. You can talk about observing the rising and falling of the chest to observe uh, uh, the patient's ability to breathe. You can administer oxygen itself, 3 to 5 liters of oxygen per minute to promote uh, tissue perfusion. You can give air using an ambu bag to promote lung perfusion. You can even nest the patient in a well-ventilated environment just to promote uh, breathing and uh, air circulation. Then in terms of circulation itself, you can talk about giving or administering fluids such as normal saline, dextrose as well, uh, apart from circulation. And uh, you can talk about in terms of cardinal headings from a, a, a profanum in terms of the environment. You can still nest the patient in the medical ward, but on the acute bay for, for closer observation. The environment, of course, should be well ventilated. It should be dust-free environment, noise-free environment, and it should have all the necessary resuscitative equipment for use whenever needed. Apart from that, you can, of course, talk about rest. You can talk about position. While the patient is unconscious in terms of position, the patient is nest in a supine position but once they are, are conscious you change the position to semi fowlers in terms of observations of course talk about checking the temperature pulse respirations and blood pressure for baseline data you can talk about also observing the level of consciousness uh, using a glass coma scale uh, so that you monitor the patient's recovery process you can also just observe the patient's response to treatment and many other things can also be observed. You can talk about psychological care. You talk about giving psychological care once the patient uh, uh, is fully awake and recovers from the uh, from unconscious state. You can talk about all those points for psychological care. Talk about uh, in terms of hygiene. This patient is unconscious, so you need to do uh, bed bath, you can talk about performing hair care, nail care, oral care, uh, bed making itself, uh, give, providing the patient with clean uh, clothes, all those points. Apart from that, you can talk about, of course, exercise, you can do passive exercises while the patient is unconscious and when they become conscious, you can encourage minimal exercises. You can talk about uh, nutrition, of course, this patient is unconscious, meaning they can't eat. You need to give meals uh, using an NG tube. Apart from that, you can talk about, of course, uh, medication. Uh, you can uh, give advice on medication and also talk about elimination. Uh, so those are the headings and, of course, how we can manage uh, a patient who has hepatic coma. Then, of course, the last question is saying state five points that could be included in the information, education, and communication to Mr. Chimbuali on discharge. So, in terms of IEC on discharge, 
some of the points that you can give its drug adherence itself you advise the patient on the importance of taking the prescribed medication so that there is a full healing and full recovery apart from that other iec that you can give is of course on drug interaction and on drug interaction you advise the patient to avoid over the counter drugs because they may cause adverse effects with the prescribed medication if they take wrong medications you can give advice in terms of dietary restrictions and data restriction you provide guidance to the patient on the importance of taking low protein diet to reduce uh, production of ammonia because ammonia comes from as a waste product of proteins hence that's why we advise patient to take low protein diet because at this moment the liver is not uh, breaking down proteins properly so you want to restrict that until when the liver uh, starts breaking down these proteins in a normal as uh, a normal situation you can give advice on follow-up care importance of follow-up this will help the medical personnel to monitor the patient's condition the recovery process uh, if at all there is any effects they're experiencing adverse effects proper care is given also lifestyle modification where you advise the patient on the importance of avoiding alcohol and certain medications that can cause further damage to the liver and this of course is followed by giving them help on healthy habits that will uh, avoid them uh, worsening the damage to the liver apart from that of course other sign the other um, iec that you can give is on signs of worsening condition you give the patient advice to say when you see certain signs or symptoms uh, the, such as the, the patient uh, a continuous experiencing jaundice, fatigue, dizziness. These are signs that the condition is worsening and they need to seek medical attention from the nearest healthy facility. So in terms of advice on discharge, these are some of the points that we can give the patient as advice on discharge. So that is how we can attempt or answer this particular question for hepatic coma. So till next time, goodbye.